At People's Capital Group, we help you invest in real estate. Build your wealth by owning professionally managed apartment buildings in the northern New Jersey market. We want to show you how owning real estate is attainable, even for the busy professionals that don't have the time or experience investing in real estate. Now, we only work with select people who are serious about building wealth. So find out if you qualify at peoplescapitalgroup.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Passive Cash Flow Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Fragnito, and today's topic is your premier guide to owning an apartment building. So today we're going to focus on uh, the process of owning an apartment building, the general benefits, and kind of dig into them in a little more depth as well than we normally do and not just breeze over some of the benefits here. Um, also, by the way, if you're enjoying our content here, make sure to hit like or subscribe. If you're on YouTube and following us, you can subscribe to our YouTube account there. Or if you're on uh, Spotify or, or Apple uh, iTunes there, uh, pay, be sure to hit subscribe so you can follow our monthly and weekly updates here. We have new podcasts every single week here on the Passive Cash Flow Podcast. So let's get right into it. All right, so top considerations for an apartment complex investment property here. Let's break into your premier guide of owning an apartment building. The first topic is the considerations for an apartment complex investment property, right? So when you're looking at investing in apartment complexes, let's start at the top here. Um, you know, you want to understand what if there's con you know constant maintenance costs or tenant issues. That is part of owning and managing apartment complexes. What if property appreciation is not what you expect or target over you know, a five-year process or three, five, ten years? Um, what if you have unforeseen issues uh, in the rental property like collecting rents or just uh, pay too much for the property or have trouble financing it as well? So these are all challenges people run into uh, when buying any type of real estate, but especially multifamily housing and apartment complexes. So let's break into location now. So location, 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 as they say, for real estate. And the same is true for apartment buildings. So it's really important to understand location you're buying, why you're buying there. Are there jobs around there? Are there things developing around there? Are there other uh, properties located in the area that are leasing similar units for more than you're going to be asking or at least equal to what you're asking? And what type of amenities should the tenants in that area expect, right? What type of tenants are you even going to attract? Who are the types of people that live in that city or that area of that city? And your quality of unit, is it going to attract a higher quality tenant or a lower quality tenant? You know, what's your tenant likely to do? What's their job going to be? What's their income going to be? And in turn, how well are they going to take care of your unit? And what are they going to expect for amenities? Are they going to be driving a car? Are they going to expect a pool or a gym? right uh what type of locks maybe the code locks right so there's different levels of real estate there's different locations we have a being the nicest type of real estate d being the lowest rung so you want to understand location 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 what type of demographic what type of tenant are you going to be attracting and dealing with and are they in that area you know the restaurants the stadiums the popular things to do around there the jobs and companies in that area you want to understand what they're going to be attracting, who they're going to be attracting. And if that is your target tenant, then that might be a good place to invest. Now let's break into the legal aspects of owning an apartment building. Okay. So there's lots of legalities when you're buying a building, you know, there's operating agreements, there's SEC regulations. If you're pooling capital, um, then when you're dealing with tenants, you have evictions, you have a whole process of, uh, uh, dealing with uh, tenant landlord law. Maybe there's rent control in the area you're investing in. You really need to understand the rent control rules and make sure you're not breaking them as a landlord. And uh, so the legalities of apartment buildings are important. You want to work with the right attorneys to guide you there. Make sure you're not breaking the law. Now let's talk about ROI, apartment building ROI. So we're going to talk about how we can uh, calculate a, a apartment complex return on investment. All right. One of the best calculations when I'm looking at a building, I'm going to say, okay, what are my investors? What's their cash on cash return going to be? So what does cash on cash mean? Simply if you invest uh, $10 or let's say you invest $100 and you make $10 a year, then you have a 10% cash on cash return. Okay. So a cash on cash return is the amount of money you're earning from the investment divided into the entire cash investment you made. 
So generally a good cash on cash return is around 10 to 12% a year. Uh, when we look at a building, we know our investors are gonna wanna make, they're gonna need to make at least a 10% cash on cash return. So because of that, I'm gonna throw away any building that doesn't produce a 10% cash and cash return, at least uh, for my investors, right? It's gotta at least earn somewhere around there, if not better, to be a building I'm gonna keep looking at to buy. Now we also have another uh, calculation here beyond the cash on cash return, which you know you wanna do cash on cash first, that's your most important calculation. We also have the capitalization rate, okay? This is another quick formula to determine how much you wanna pay for a building and if you're overpaying for it based on its net operating income. Okay, so the net operating income of a building is of course how much is left over after it covers all those expenses, but before the cost of income tax and uh, interest. So um, for the most part, we wanna take our net operating income and divide it into our capitalization rate for that area. Now, areas of high demand, say Manhattan, is gonna have a low capitalization rate because it's a super high demand market. So people are buying there expecting essentially a lower amount of cash flow because they're ideally gonna have a larger amount of equity growth. But since buildings in Manhattan are extremely expensive and kind of overpriced in my opinion, you're gonna have a low capitalization rate there. Okay, well let's now go 200 miles away from Manhattan into the middle of nowhere. Well, that's gonna have a higher capitalization rate, or let's take an inner city area away from Manhattan, a different city with high crime, a less desirable market, that's gonna again have a, low, a, a higher capitalization rate because the property values are going to be lower. So when we have lower property values, we have higher cap rates, but the bottom line is you wanna know the type of capitalization rate for the market you're buying in. Okay, a lesser desirable market's gonna have a higher capital, capital, capitalization rate, a cap rate, and a more desirable market's going to have a lower cap rate, okay? It's like Manhattan has a lower cap rate, right? So we wanna take our cap rate for that market and we wanna use that to figure out the value of our building by taking our net operating income, dividing it in our, into our cap rate, and that's gonna give us the amount we wanna pay for that building. Now remember, a building might not be cash flowing all that well. It may not be a very attractive asset right now. So your cash on cash return and your capitalization rate analysis might not make a lot of sense. You might say, well, this is overpriced, but then look into the value out of the building. So just side note here, the hidden value in real estate is actually in the value add, right? You might say, wow, this building, what they're asking is too much. It has a low cap rate. It has a low cash and cash return, but then you might say, well, hold on a minute. All the competitors in town are charging 50% more than what this building is charging. And if we just improved the units a little bit and maybe you know, brought the gym back to life and, and did some work to the common areas and the exterior, well, we might be able to get the rent on this building easily up to that 50% higher mark that our competitors are charging. Because we have all the same things, we just have to take care of them better for our building and package them the right way for our investors. So. That's called a value add opportunity where you can increase the value of that real estate by increasing the cash flow and, and, and doing physical improvements and better management to the building. And that's what we look for here at People's Capital Group. And that's how we force value into our buildings. So using these calculations, cash and cash return, capitalization rate, these are quick numbers, quick formulas to give us an understanding of, are they asking too much for this building? And they probably are, right? But at the end of the day, you wanna see that hidden value and define the value add, the potential for that building to become a better asset and what it's gonna to cost to get there. And hey, you know what? If there's a lot of value add, then maybe, then if you get a little bit better price on that property, it can make sense to, for a purchase. So now we're gonna talk about how to optimize apartment building features here. So when we're buying a building, we wanna look at amenities that, again, other competitive buildings are offering and other uh, benefits that competing uh, buildings are gonna offer, right? So for the most part, we wanna understand, uh, you know, what are other people going to be offered? What are other tenants, when they're shopping around for an apartment in that city, are they gonna expect pools or, or gyms or parking or laundry, right? Um, so you have to understand what to have in your building to attract the right type of tenant. 
Now, a lot of this is done by talking with brokers and investment specialists. And quite frankly, if you're investing passively with a group such as ours, People's Capital Group here, you're really not gonna have to need to know all these little ins and outs of your market and your building and your reposition strategy but you're gonna be investing with professionals that are gonna really paint this all out for you and explain it to you in a nice, understandable manner. And then they're gonna go ahead and take some of your capital and put that to work in the building and along with other people's capital as well and do all these uh, exercises, all these things necessary, the physical renovations, the improved management of the building to get better cash flow out of it and therefore improve the value of it and build your wealth in real estate. So that's by teaming up with professionals, and that's quite frankly how most people invest in apartment buildings. But let's keep getting into it here. So why owning an apartment complex can be so profitable? So let's talk about six undeniable reasons apartment buildings are smart investment. So first of all, equity, okay? One of the most amazing things about real estate is that when you improve the net operating income of a building by $1, it actually improves the value of the building by a lot more than $1. By using that capitalization rate uh, analysis, you can see, let's say you increase your cap rate is 5%, which is a pretty common cap rate for high demand markets where we invest in, generally between five to 6% is where we're purchasing. Uh, so if I increase the value of my, uh, the net operating income of my building by $1, and I divide that into my cap rate of 5%, that actually increases my building value by $2. So therefore, Every dollar of net operating income per year I can increase on my building, it's an exponential increase on the value of my building, the equity of my building. So that's just a phenomenal gain in wealth as we do that to the building time and time again and increase that rent roll exponentially, which increases our building even more so over time. Also capitalization on monthly apartment income, right? So we're uh, uh, the benefit of owning apartment buildings is that people tend to rent in tough times. A lot of people are looking to rent as well uh, instead of buying a home as, as interest rates go up also. So it's a consistent demand there uh, for apartment buildings. And by having long-term leases as well, we, uh, we create a safer investment as well that has more predictable income from longer-term leasing on those units. And then uh, property management. So one of the reasons I like apartment building ownership also is it's easier to scale and own more and more of them because we own a property management company here at People's Capital Group. So that allows us to manage the property in-house and we do things like impose evictions, uh, secure rental payments, uh, manage security deposits, initiate and terminate leases as well. We arrange inspections and reduce maintenance costs and increase the building value by doing all these different avenues. See, we've hired a number of management companies in the past and we actually found that many of them were not getting what we needed done to reposition apartment buildings, improve the value of them, improve the net operating income, and therefore improve the wealth overall for our investors. So we found the most important thing was property management. And if we're gonna put our reputation on the line and borrow other people's capital and put it to work in real estate, you better bet we wanna make sure we have control of that asset and things are gonna go according to plan. And if they don't, we can fire people or quickly solve the problem and get things back on track. So that's why we developed our own management company here at People's Capital Group. And that's been one of our greatest assets uh, ever since we've done that in 2015. Another reason why people like investing in apartment buildings is well here, uh, we have the uh, portfolio diversification, right? So most people are invested in the stock market by getting into real estate syndications that are owning apartment complexes. Investors can have the same experience as investing in the stock market, being completely passive, enjoying monthly updates, quarterly financials, and just invest information on how their investment's doing, um, but also being actually diversified into real estate into actual brick and mortar ownership of real estate. So true diversification of your investment portfolio is always extremely important. You wanna have some stocks, you wanna have some bonds, but you also wanna have some capital invested with professionals in real estate. 
and more than one income stream, right? So, um, you know, when you're owning a single family home, you only have one income stream or even a duplex or a triplex, right? You have a couple income streams there, a couple tenants paying you rent. When you have 50, 60, 100 units under one roof, your economies of scale make it easier to continue to collect income, to cover expenses as they, as they come around. And then, you know, imagine you have a vacancy on a single family home, your tenant moves out, you gotta renovate the unit, get it leased up again, that tends to take about three or four months. So to do that, it can take a long time. You'll have no money coming in. Same with like a duplex, you know, half your tenant move out, right? So that's a big challenge. So more units under one roof is a better strategy in real estate, uh, hands down, in my opinion. And now why apartment complexes are different, right? So in today's economic times, we're experiencing a recession. We're experiencing raising interest rates as well. So it's been more expensive now to own a home. The prices of home have kind of gone up, 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 and up. Interest rates are going up now as well. So the cost of the debt has increased. So more people are hitting the brakes on buying a home and deciding to rent. And that's why we like apartment buildings in recessions because in most recessions, people slow down on buying homes and they turn around and say, you know what, I'm gonna rent for now because I, you know, I'm not sure about my job, not sure about the economy, so I'm gonna rent. When more people rent, well, rental prices stay strong or, or increase as well. So that's why we feel apartment buildings are recession resilient, especially middle of the road buildings. We don't buy the most expensive real estate available. We also don't buy class D, the lowest rung of real estate. We focus on class B and C, which tend to fare quite well through recession. So property appreciation perks, right? The whole idea of property appreciation is amazing as we harvest that equity growth and we turn that equity growth into cash and we pay our investors. That's a way of, of paying our investors, but a tax-free liquidity event. Now, if you don't understand what that means, I've done tons of podcasts about the cash out refinance. I'm not gonna break into much to it right now because this is more about uh, the general perks of owning real estate. But one of the biggest benefits is the cash out refinance harvesting that equity growth, turning your equity into cash, putting that cash in your pocket and not paying any taxes on that cash. It's an amazing strategy. It's what we do here, the buy, renovate, refinance strategy at People's Capital Group. And that's how our investors earn large liquidity events, large lump sums of cash without having to pay taxes on that. So that's a really nice experience for our passive investors. And of course, you have the reductions of all the property taxes and all the tax benefits in general of real estate really over stock market and other asset classes. See, the reason why 60% of billionaires wealth is held in real estate is because there's a ton of tax benefits. We have the capital gains uh, tax, which is lesser than income tax. You have the IRA benefits. You can self-direct your IRA into real estate. Opportunity zones, federal opportunity zones, allow for investors to defer all taxes if they hold properties for long enough. Tax depreciation allows you to write off um, unforeseen costs and just general, you know, an amount every year on your building. You can also front load that and write off a ton of tax depreciation up front. Then you have pass-through deductions as well, and just tons of costs to manage and own real estate that are all going to write off your income so that you're essentially able to earn some cash flow on the building, pay yourself through the cash out refinance as we do with our properties, but not pay any income tax on those earnings. And that's what our investors really enjoy about how we pay them through our real estate because it's uh, tax free essentially. So finally, owning an apartment building, you know, it's a really nice feeling to own an apartment building. Even if you're only investing $30,000 in a syndication and owning a small piece of an apartment building, hey, you're still owning real estate. You're still owning an apartment building and getting all the benefits of owning real estate without having to do the work. So it's a really incredible wealth creation vehicle that people want and people deserve. See, for years, it was hard to own apartment buildings. It was really only available to hedge funds or family offices or multimillionaires that uh, were willing to work with management companies and, and do all the work behind the scenes to, to put it together. But now with real estate syndications, we allow people to get access to off-market opportunities, invest uh, with professionals in real estate, and make sure that their money is doing the right things, invest in the right properties for the right prices, as we renovate the buildings, make them cash flow machines, and then harvest that equity growth for our investors. So they enjoy monthly updates, quarterly cash flow checks, quarterly financials, but they don't have to do all the heavy lifting behind the scenes that we do here as professionals with real estate that Seth Martinez, my business partner and I, have been doing over the last decade for our many investors. So 
If you want to learn more about how we help people invest in real estate, check out more content on our, our website, peoplescapitalgroup.com. We have weekly podcasts, monthly webinars, and of course, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Make sure you're following us here on the platform you enjoy these podcasts on. And when you're ready to invest, go to peoplescapitalgroup.com, review everything we have there, and then click review opportunities on the top right, and you'll be able to get qualified, set up your uh, discovery call with me, Aaron Fragnito. We can connect, learn about your investment goals, and see if our goals align. Hopefully they do. Hopefully we can start building wealth together here in real estate. So I look forward to connecting. It all starts at peoplescapitalgroup.com. Enjoy your day.